Ben had the audacity to ask me, are we really taking this tonight? This morning, I'm having coffee with Dove. Last night, I was a fucking mess. Uh. I just called the police, and they're coming over here, and I'm gonna file a report about what happened yesterday. And I'm really kinda of torn because when it comes to neighbors, I don't wanna escalate things. Um, and I don't want to make something out of nothing. But my primary responsibility is to protect and look out for and defend my family, my kids. More than kind of like make peace in a neighborhood. I mean, that's important too. So there was like some threats made yesterday and I don't want to make a big deal out of nothing, but I also want to escalate the situation appropriately. So I'm gonna file a report. I don't know how this works. I don't even know what to say. So I'm waiting for the police officer now. They said it'd be a few minutes. It's kind of weird. Everyone will get one. But can you pass that down on the dove? Okay. Today we're gonna to be talking about China. Well, Cammie's teaching the kids history, I wanted to take a minute to debrief this discussion I just had with this police officer. He uh, came by our house. I'm, I'm really glad that I did this. I don't like calling the police. Uh, I like to think that we can like kind of solve things ourselves. So I was telling this police officer what happened. He said, yeah, that's, uh, that's unacceptable. And that was cool. I think it's going to follow up. I hope this doesn't escalate it. I don't want to escalate this, but I think it's important to recognize that there's already a situation that's happening, and if I don't do anything about it, it could cause our family harm. So I'm telling him about this, and then the kids start congregating out on the, the porch, and we're talking on the sidewalk. And he looks at me and he goes, Do you guys run? And he, he goes, is that kid's name Seven? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, we run. And he goes, I talked to you guys on the marathon. He goes, I'm the one carrying the American flag. Mile 19. Mile 19. See that right there? See that guy? That's him. And then, not only that, I actually went back and I looked at our marathon footage from the marathon we ran two years ago, and you wouldn't believe it. Right here. That's him too. I was kind of worried about talking to this police officer, and I don't like to use this phrase loosely, but I just felt like the Lord's favor. I was like, a connection like that, you can't make that I don't know, the police officer, I got the feeling that he liked us. One of the stories that really changed my life that led up to why I made the phone call today, I read in a book, it was like this dating your daughter type book. He told this story of his daughter coming home one day and saying, Daddy, Daddy, uh, the neighbor lady was yelling at me for driving too fast 
and I wasn't, Daddy, I wasn't driving too fast. And the dad says, okay, sure, honey, no problem. I love you and, and trust you. Anyways, sure enough, um, 10 minutes later, there's a knock on the door. And it's this lady, and she says to the dad, your daughter was driving too fast. You need to do something about her. This is terrible. And the dad looks at the old lady and says, I'm sorry, ma'am, I'll take care of it. I totally understand. And he closes the door and he turns around and his daughter is standing right there, staring at him and says, Daddy, you knew the truth. Why didn't you defend me? You knew I didn't do it. And for some reason that just like really hit me because I was always taught to be the like nice guy. If you're a Christian or if you're following Jesus, like you just like kind of try and peace at any price and you just turn the other cheek and you just, I don't know, you don't really have to defend anybody and um, put out the fires. And I'm all for peace, but there's a time when peace is not an option, when you have to choose who to defend, whether it be honor or whether it be physically. And what I learned in that situation was, I want to defend my daughters and my kids and my wife. I'm the only person on this planet charged in that way to do it. What happened in the last uh, 12 hours was there was a threat made. And I, hopefully it wasn't real, hopefully nothing happens, hopefully it's gone, but if given the choice of choosing kind of a, a peace, which isn't even real, it doesn't exist right now, there's no peace, or standing up for someone and letting, even letting them know that they're worth standing up for, I'm gonna choose that option now. So that's why I made that phone call. I feel like that choice as a man of choosing my family first is important. And that was a new thing for me because I thought it, well, we should actually choose this like greater ethereal philosophy of peace and protecting everyone. And I don't think that is real or possible. The best way to protect peace is by protecting those that are vulnerable and have been entrusted to me. And now we're having dinner in the garden with the family. It is 10 o'clock at night. We've had a busy evening. The reason is, is tomorrow we're going away for the weekend to our friend Brian and Annie's lake house, which is like a couple hours away. So we're getting ready, packing like crazy. Uh, looks like the kids have their stuff packed. Right now, I'm gonna be making waffle batter for Saturday for everyone. Hmm. Are you like the butter, butter, butter? Pour it right in the center. I miss it. Gonna mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the secret ingredient that you need for these kind of waffles. It's called a liege style waffle. And this is the Belgian pearl sugar. Mm -hmm. And it caramelizes in the waffles. Uh, someday if we film Saturdays, you guys are gonna have to see these things. You know where seven is? He might be over at home. Brian and Caleb are working out. Oh, mom. No, that's not. I mean, I hate that, but I mean, in a way, like, I feel like cream bread. Here we are. Does it say something when you live in the type of area where all these products are in like boxes? <laughs> oh, this has two tests. Do you ever wonder when you're checking out with one of these things what the people are thinking? They're like, are these the type of people that have sex? Are you in this pregnancy test tonight? All right, 
we're still trying to figure stuff out here. We got our mangoes, we got our melon, and now Cammy's telling me. I just feel, I already feel silly taking this test because I don't think I'm pregnant, but I still want to take the test. So every time you say, are we really taking this test? It makes me feel even sillier for taking it. I'm not trying to make you feel silly. I just. I know. It's not. I'm not. It's not your fault. I just have really weird, mixed emotions with it. Ah. <sighs> Please remove all items from scanner scan. Welcome, valued customer. Four twenty nine. Place your item in the bagging area. Continue scanning. Enter your item quantity and touch the done button one zero place your item in the bag fifteen dollars credit two fifty place your item in the bagging area place your item in the bagging area each item must be placed in the bagging area select the item to purchase enter your cantaloupe quantity and touch the done button one place your cantaloupe in the bag one ninety nine place your item in the bagging area that was easy oh, thank god for self checkouts Why? i was just thinking well i was just be like <laughs> it's bad enough, all you have to know this. 